I want to remind everybody the larger premise. The Department of Justice, pursuant to a lawful search warrant, conducted a search on Mar-a-Lago on August 8th and recovered thousands of documents that were not legally supposed to be there. Now, as they went into the investigation of this, there was, uh, this was an internal criminal investigation by the Department of Justice, which is an Article II branch department that investigates and enforces investigations by conducting prosecutions. They got a lawful search warrant from a judge magistrate of the federal, of the third Article III branch of government to sign off on a lawful search warrant. That was Judge Bruce Reinhardt. We, we've even forgotten, you know, it's in the back of our minds, this person's name. He is the judge who is rightfully supposed to oversee the criminal investigation over which he is the arbiter. He signed the warrant. He's overseeing the investigation. He um, uh, issued the filter team protocols. And what we are seeing here today now with Donald appealing a partial appeal of the special master order of the 11th circuit is an attenuation out of an aberration of the special master review motion to begin with, which Judge Cannon accepted the case on the basis of, of equitable jurisdiction, which is a really flimsy uh, place to start. And consistently throughout this whole obstruction process of the special master um, case that Donald brought in Judge Cannon's court, it has categorically parsed and gone point by point and appealed and uh, moved to a special master review. Then Judge Cannon has restricted and, and changed orders of Judge Deary, who is a special master, and extended the uh, review and uh, created this auspice that the Department of Justice, who, whose job it is under the Constitution to investigate, uh, prosecute, enforce the laws of the union, somehow has, their words are not believable and therefore the facts are in dispute. When they themselves state that we're not discussing the merits of the case. We're just discussing the procedures of how things are being reviewed and whether privileges apply. Well, if you are, that's what you're doing to see if privileges apply. Why are you saying that the facts are in dispute? Why are you saying that we, there's dispute on the matter of whether there is uh, if, whether the classifications are legitimate or not. Because only the incumbent president and the enforcement branches of the incumbent president can assert what is classified, what is not. And for Judge Cannon to even grant a special master review, mind you, she was in, she wrote it down that it, she's inclined to a special master review. Excuse me for a moment. She's inclined to grant a special master review even before the DOJ, even before the DOJ replied to Donald's motion for a special master. So, but then again, in this motion for a partial appeal to the Supreme Court, Donald argues that there that 
the district court reviewed the briefs extensively before issuing the order. Well, she preemptively said that she would be inclined to grant the review before receiving the DOJ's reply. So if they are documenting themselves as having uh, ruled prejudicially and then coming around and flipping, they're just flipping everything on their heads. So I'm going to read you portions of this, right? This is from Donald Trump's appeal to the Supreme Court, partial appeal of the 11th Circuit's order. And in this appeal, Donald Trump is asking the Supreme Court to take a partial review of the 11th Circuit's order granting the stay that DOJ wanted as to the 100 classified documents with the classified markings. Not the rest of them. Judge Deary has the rest of them. And I, I would infer that this is happening because DOJ filed a motion to expedite their appeal in the 11th Circuit of the entire special master review, thereby bringing the whole sham of this special master process into question. So, mind you, what... The DOJ did with appealing the special master motion wasn't an interlocutory appeal. The asking for the partial stay was an emergency motion because that was causing irreparable harm to our national security. But the larger appeal of the special master review as a whole is still pending in the 11th Circuit. And Donald Trump has replied to the motion of expediting the appeal. While that's happening, here's another inter-interlocutory procedure. So to go up to the Supreme Court to adjudicate whether Donald Trump, whether Judge Deary should receive those 100 classified documents that the DOJ will not release to the 11th Circuit, uh, uh, to Judge Deary, and the 11th Circuit agreed with the DOJ. So, what Donald's appeal to the Supreme Court says here is the unprecedented circumstances presented by this case, an investigation of the 45th President of the United States by the administration of his political rival and successor. Well, at least he says successor, meaning he's now the incumbent president. Also, the Donald Trump has not ever not included this political rival uh, argument. But one thing and one distinguishing reason why this is not a political issue is that this search warrant and and they even question the verity of the search warrant this search warrant was signed off by an article 3 judge by magistrate so as procedure should happen for any private citizen of the United States who was not afforded any of the privileges other than attorney, client, spousal, clergy, and other um, any other privileges, oh, um, medical uh, privileges. Other than that, Donald Trump has no executive privilege at the moment. And that issue is also, mind you, he hasn't brought up any of executive privilege issue that's still stuck with the Deary uh, special master review. This unwarranted stay should be vacated as it impairs substantially the ongoing time-sensitive work of the special master. I wanted to read this to you because I wanted to show you here what I mean by flipping everything on its head. The time-sensitive work that is being delayed is the DOJ's criminal investigation that was intervened by the special master motion by Trump, Donald Trump, which put a stop to the DOJ's investigation and which brought 
uh, the investigation to a halt that caused the, uh, the appeal to the 11th Circuit. And it, you see how he has flipped it on its head in this argument here. This application seeks to vacate only the portion of the 11th Circuit stay order, limiting the scope of the special master review of the documents bearing classification markings, as I, as I said to you. So, uh, then, in furtherance with his request to be protected from the consequence Consequences of an unlawful search and seizure of his property. I wanted to read this little part snippet to you because he's asserting in a motion to the Supreme Court that a lawfully searched, lawfully executed search warrant based on a lawfully issued search warrant by a magistrate is an unlawful search and seizure of Donald Trump's property when the DOJ, which is the enforcement branch with the authority to assess whether something is classified or not, has said repeatedly and has gone to untold lengths in describing to the courts and to the American people how this is a national security matter. But still, in this appeal, Donald says this is an unlawful search on his property. It re then it goes on to say the district court exercised its equitable jurisdiction and inherent supervisory authority to safeguard the rights of President Trump as a citizen subject to potentially unlawful search and seizure and granted President Trump's motion in part. As I said uh, earlier, the equitable jurisdiction thing is flimsy at best because equity would favor the party that has presented most evidence facts as to why the documents should not be given to Donald Trump or the special master review should not be conducted because they have interjected and overreached into core executive branch functions. Inherent supervisory authority, I don't, I don't recall Judge Cannon being the supervisory judge of Judge Reinhardt. If that is the case, then there is supervisory authority. But over any abuse of discretion or uh, misapplication of the law by the ma judge magistrate. And there has been no showing that Judge Reinhardt did anything wrong. And Donald hasn't brought that up either. So the next part, indeed, in what is essentially a document storage dispute governed by the Presidential Records Act, the government has sought to criminalize Donald's possession, Donald Trump, President Trump's possession and management of his own personal and presidential records. So this is just an assertion that, that they are saying, the, Donald Trump is saying that this is, these are mine, but Throughout the process of the special master and Judge Deary asking them to prove that this is theirs, that, that he in fact did declassify them, or that they are, they fall under any uh, um, of his private property, what they are, he doesn't want to say that. And he, in fact, Judge Cannon went and stopped Judge Deary, which caused the 11, uh, which caused the DOJ to appeal to the 11th circuit. Do you see the circuitousness of all of this, the hamstringing that's going on here? Nobody's seeking to criminalize anything because the DOJ hasn't filed a criminal indictment. The investigation is ongoing. So where is the government has sought to criminalize Donald Trump's possessions come from? It is still in the investigative process. Then they go back to quoting the district court, Judge Cannon's order. I'm going to read these excerpts and parse through them. Taking into account the undeniably unprecedented nature of the search of a former president's residence. Well, 
No other former president has taken what the DOJ surmises to be classified documents. Plaintiff's inability to examine the seized materials and formulating his arguments to date. Plaintiff had those documents for 19 months. So if they didn't examine those documents in that time, what is to say that it's going to take another 19 months for them to assess the documents if they receive it now? Which is one of the arguments that the DOJ points out in the potential of um, indefinite delays. Plaintiff's stated reliance on the customary cooperation between former and incumbent administrations regarding the ownership and exchange of documents. Well, that's what those 11 months of communicating with NARA and, uh, and the DOJ did not yield. And that's why this, this is where we are. So, and by the way, the DOJ has shown that over and over again. And in fact, Donald even talked about how those events occurred. So those facts are not in dispute. Yet, here we are with Cannon's order. The power imbalance between the parties. Well, the private citizen and the state. That is a perpetual power imbalance that is part of any criminal investigation into any private citizen, which happens every day all over the United States. The importance of maintaining institutional trust, which Judge Cannon breaks down on and, and attacks by saying that the DOJ's assertions as to their criminal investigations into classified documents belonging to the government is somehow in dispute. So who is maintaining institutional trust here and who is breaking it? And the interest in ensuring the integrity of an orderly process amid swirling allegations of bias and media leaks. Mind you, that nobody would have known about this search had Donald not publicized it. So that's where this started. That's where the gates were open. And when you open those gates, when the DOJ walks through them subsequently, that is still on Donald. None of this would be happening if Donald didn't publicize the search and then go on to intervene and impede a governmental investigation with national security implications. Then the district court or says, the party's submission suggests the existence of genuine dis disputes as to wh whether certain seized documents constitute personal or presidential records and whether certain seized personal effects have evidentiary value. Because of those disputes are bound up with plaintiff's rules 41G, 41G request and involve issues of fact, the court must receive evidence from the parties thereon that step calls for a comprehensive review of seized property. But then again, in this, even in this appeal, they say that, no, we're not addressing the merits of the case. So this is not a fact-finding uh, process we are engaged in. This is all procedural. However, here, the district court is sowing genuine dispute into the factual record. So you have to ask, which is it? And I hope the Supreme Court, if it takes the appeal, will ask that. I would hope that the Supreme Court would just throw away and not grant certiorari. But <clears throat> this is a desecration of the federal bench. This is the desecration of federal courts. This is, and this has been happening now for two months. So... If the Supreme Court does intervene, they need to question whether what Judge Cannon has done is proper before addressing any of the other questions. And that should be enough to stop them from even going further and giving the case back to the DOJ to investigate. Then the appeal goes on to say the government's position thus, oh, no, this is still part of the uh, the appeal quoting the district court. The government's position thus presupposes the content designation and associated interest in materials under its control. Yet as parties competing 
filings reveal there are disputes as to the proper designation of the seized materials and impli legal implications flowing from those designations and the intersecting bodies of law permeating those designations. Now, again, there are disputes as to the proper designation? No, because it is the enforcement branch, it is this Article II branch of government, the presidency and thereby the DOJ by way of the presidency that assigns the designation. That designation, the, the Article III branch of government doesn't have the authority to dispute or bring that designation into question unless that question is being brought in a court of law as part of a case brought to the court. And that factual case has not been brought to the court yet. As repeated many times over. Now, here, the, the Donald's appeal says the PRA contains no provision obligating or even permitting the archivist to assume control over records that the president categorized and filed separately as personal records. At the conclusion of the president's term, the archivist only assumes responsibility of the presidential records. Well, thank you for saying that because that process, the, the process, you know, since process is so important to Donald, that process of the archivist assuming responsibility of presidential records didn't happen because you thought you could bypass it and take those preemptively. So thank you for at least, you know, conceding that, that the archivist assumes responsibility of the presidential records. The PRA does not confer any mandatory or discretionary authority on the archivist to classify the records. Under the statute, this responsibility is left solely to the president. Mind you, the current president. So even if Donald had executive privilege or the authority to take those documents to Mar-a-Lago when he was president up until noon of January 20, 2021, from that day onwards, when President Biden and Vice President Harris took office, he no longer had that right. It was his <coughs> requirement under law, under the Presidential Records Act, as he concedes, to return those documents to the National Archives and then request for them back. There's jargon about President Bush and President Obama, I don't know the verity of the facts of what happened, but I would bet my bottom dollar that both President uh, George W. Bush and President Obama followed the process of letting the archives assume control and responsibility of the documents before going back to them and asking for them. Critically important here, again, reading the appeal, President Trump has sole discretion to classify, had the sole discretion to classify a record as personal or presidential. Of course, sure, he did. But neither is he president at the moment, nor did he show to Judge Cannon, Judge Reinhardt, or Judge Deary. When Deary asked, Judge Cannon said, no, you don't have to show that as to whether he did declassify those documents or not. So absent showing of fact that those documents were declassified by the president per procedure, not just because he took them at the time he was president. Well, if that is the argument that he took them at the time as he was president, the minute he stopped being president, what he did stopped being legal and it was his job to return them. The fact that he didn't, constitutes the violations. So I suppose this appeal also has some concessions without realizing it. Congress provided certain par uh, parameters for controlling classified information, but primarily delegated to the president how to regulate classified information. Again, thank you for conceding that. 
president of the United States currently is Joe Biden, which in this appeal, Donald himself concedes by saying that he is the 45th president and this administration is of his successor. So that primary duty is of Joe Biden's, not Donald Trump's. So if Donald Trump's argument flies with the Supreme Court that he took it when he was president and therefore he class declassified them and therefore they're his, the moment he left and stopped being president, it automatically became Joe Biden's because it is government property and the government has shown that it is government property through letters from the investigative um, um, director of the FBI and countless other ways in their uh, replies and motions in this special master review. So then, then here we go. Here it is. It simply cannot be an abuse of discretion for the Supreme uh, for the district court to refer these matters to a special master to determine whether documents bearing classification markings are in fact classified, regardless of classification, uh, whether those documents and with regardless of classification, whether those documents, whether those records are personal records or presidential records, such that their disposition may be managed properly under the PRA. Who is the special master to designate documents classified? That is not the job of a, a special master pursu uh, uh, pursuant to an order by a civil court judge who intervened in a criminal in a DOJ criminal investigation pursuant to a lawful search warrant that a judge magistrate signed. Where does the district court have the right or the authority to question the verity of that designation. Absent any showing from Donald's part that he did anything to declassify those documents or any other process to comply with the Presidential Records Act. In fact, this government, the DOJ has provided all ample proof that Donald has not complied with these uh, these requests, these uh, these statutes that he has repeatedly violated. And they have been compelled to make these disclosures in court because Donald brought this case. As then finally, the final excerpt that I want to focus on, as correctly stated by the district court, President Trump faces an unquantifiable potential harm by way of improper disclosure of sensitive information to the public. Now, there are so many things wrong about that statement. The President Trump faces an unquantifiable potential harm. As I have said many, many times before, it is an untold law in jurisprudence that when you speak of a harm that is being caused to you because of a certain conduct, you have to specify that harm. And that harm had to have happened for you to bring a cause of action to court. My, so here, this idea that faces an unquantifiable potential harm is just buffoonery. And then you add to that by way of proper dis, improper disclosure of sensitive information to the public. 11,000 government documents, including, 11, including 100 documents with highly classified markings, were stored in Mar-a-Lago in Donald Trump's desk. That is a flagrant violation of any documents with that level of classification that the DOJ has said repeatedly. So much so that the DOJ is going to great lengths to both appease Donald's tantrums and continue the investigation and go to the appellate court with just request of uh, keeping these hundred classified documents because these uh, hundred extremely classified documents were improperly stored for the last 18 months at Mar-a-Lago, which is a country club. And Donald Trump is facing unquantifiable potential harm from improper disclosure of 
sensitive information to the public? No, it's a government that has already incurred irreparable harm from the delay of this investigation for the last two months. And the continued delay of it by these sub interlocutory appeals by Donald, these interjecting, overreaching acts that has been perpetuated by Judge Cannon's special master motion. That has been further perpetuated by uh, Judge Cannon micromanaging the special master motion and telling Judge Deary what he can and can cannot ask for in his review. And then going up to the Supreme Court while the appeal is pending in the 11th Circuit of the entire review to say that, no, you have to tell the 11th Circuit to return, to, to give back, compel the DOJ to give back those 100 highly classified documents to Judge Deary and thereby the plaintiff's counsel. That would not cause any irreparable harm is what Donald Trump is asserting here. That a DOJ criminal investigation with national security implications with assertions that the 11th Circuit has agreed with has caused and is causing and will cause irreparable harm to our government and our national security is somehow a less of an interest of the government and of the courts than Donald Trump's unquantifiable potential harm of improper, improper disclosure of sensitive information to the public. The absurdity of that claim is redundant in that statement. So now the DOJ will reply. Let's see what they have to say. Then it'll go up to uh, the Supreme Court. Let's. I would hope the Supreme Court would issue an order similar to the, the one with Trump v. Thompson and, um, you know, deny the, the, the grant of cert and maybe the ruling will be 8-1 or 7-2 because Kavanaugh and Thomas are, you know, compromised.